Hey everyone, and welcome to the first episode of the VOD Reviews. Um, thanks to everyone who's been sending me their gameplay. I've received quite a few, um, but I also think my Gmail is kind of screwed at the moment. So if I didn't reply to your email, chances are I didn't receive it. So make sure to just send me a link on Twitter or message me on YouTube or Facebook, whatever's easiest. And if I reply to you, then that means I received it. So today we are reviewing some Mercy gameplay that was sent in by Chortlebra and this is on Lijung Tower at Platinum Rank. First things first, I'm not scripting any of this. These are just things that come to my mind as I'm watching this game and you know if I stutter or if I say anything that doesn't make sense I apologize because I'm not very good with words. So yeah, I'm just trying to see what works best. Okay, so the round starts and the first thing you're going to want to do is to just look at your team comp and see how it might affect the way you play. Um, so as you can see here, Mercy is the main healer on the team and Lucio is the secondary healer. And what that means is that you're going to have to pay a bit more attention to your positioning and make sure that you're not really caught out because if you die or if you get picked off then your team's gonna lose its major source of healing and your tanks are probably gonna have a very hard time surviving off Lucio's heals alone. Okay so here Mercy does a good job in staying back to heal Reinhardt but quickly she gets out of position because she uses her guardian angel for no reason even though she's not taking any damage and so she sort of has to you know escape and in doing so she can't heal her team for a while. Now Guardian Angel can be used very effectively to um, dodge and kite your enemies but here Mercy had used it to heal a full health Genji and that ultimately put her in a very bad spot where she's directly vulnerable to Farah's attacks and ultimately she dies because of that. So in the second fight, Mercy uses her Guardian Angel much better where she is effectively dodging attacks while at the same time healing her teammates. Um, one thing I want to note is that she's not looking, not always looking at the person she's healing which is a good thing because the thing with Mercy's beam is that you don't always have to look at your target and it'll still be latched onto them so you can use that to sort of um, gain vision and be aware of your surroundings while at the same time healing your teammates. Unfortunately though, this is an example where Mercy is trying to do too much to heal everyone. Um, it would have been better if she just hit because the enemy team was, was using all their ultimates and she would have gotten a much better res off rather than waiting and healing people and then managing to only res one person. She also could have gotten a two man res if she reacted fast enough, but you know that's something that every Mercy player will experience, you know, when you're trying to fly in and res as many people as you can, but then the counter like sort of goes up and down and then you get the wrong number. So that's completely understandable. However, you should also make a judgment in your mind like how far you're gonna fly in before that one man becomes a two man res, so you know you should actively think about these things. The enemy team is trying to make a push and unfortunately Mercy makes the wrong decision by trying to stay with her team on the ground and healing you know, whoever she can when the enemy team is probably going to come in with ultimates um, and that ultimately causes her to die. In this situation what I would have done is to just walk walked up to the very top room, you know, on the second level of this stage or whatever because that, that's a very good spot to hide from flankers and it also gives you high ground which lets you res people very easily. So Mercy got very lucky here because her team managed to hold the point even though she died with res. And as a Mercy player, that's one of the mistakes that you should always be looking to avoid is dying with res um, in situations where it could have been avoided very easily. When you know that the enemy team is pushing in with ultimates, your healing isn't really going to do that much and so it's better off that you hide rather than trying to heal and getting caught in the process. Alright so in the second round the team comes a bit different and this time Mercy has a Pharaoh who can act as a safety point for her to fly to whenever she's in a bad spot so that's very good. 
One thing to note when you're playing on this stage of Li Jiang Tao in particular is that when you're going to go onto the point, that's a very crowded space and it's very hard for Mercy to survive. So you should either be clinging to the walls around the center of that point or you should not be on the point at all. Or you could pocket Farah. Okay, so Mercy gets back to her team who has managed to hold off the enemy. So she's healing them. Yep, that's all good. But she makes another mistake here. Notice how her team gets split up and instead of flying directly to Farah to heal her, she pulls out her pistol to try and land some shots on Soldier, who she can't really see that well anyway. If Mercy had just healed Farah directly, she might have survived and ended up taking out Soldier rather than him killing all three of them. This is my perspective that is that when you're playing Mercy, you should never be using a pistol unless you're certain that it's going to guarantee you a kill or an assist. Um, I guess that's why in my montages or my other videos you rarely see me killing anybody as Mercy because I never really use my pistol that much. Hmm, unfortunately Mercy's team dies way too quickly here so she can't get a res fast enough so she dies again. As they are trying to push in again, Diva ulties and Reinhardt manages to push her ulti away. Uh, so Soldier also ulties, so Mercy decides to hide, which is definitely what I would have done in this situation. Unfortunately though, she only reses one person again, um, when I'm pretty sure that she could have resed two and still survived. But that's okay. As they try to get back, Mercy unnecessarily damage boosts Lucio, which causes Reinhardt to die, which is really bad because he's the main tank and it's really hard to push if your main tank is dead. As a result, her team has to use their ultimates in order to survive before they even got to point, which is not ideal because the enemy team will probably just push them off again with their ultimates once they try to contest. So in the end they lose this round, um, Mercy didn't really do that bad of a job, it's just that she made quite a few mistakes and with Mercy, some mistakes can have quite an impact on how the game plays out, so keep that in mind. So at the start of this next round, Mercy actually does a really good job with her positioning. Um, as you can see, she's not using her Guardian Angel unnecessarily as we saw before, and she's keeping herself at a safe distance where she can heal her teammates while avoiding damage. The only thing I'd suggest is that when you're pocketing a Roadhog or something and you see him hook someone, just quickly tap the damage boost just to ensure the kill. Okay, so Mercy now has a res and she's keeping a safe distance which is really good because she knows that the enemy team might wipe out her teammates at any moment and she needs that res. Since only Sombra died, she holds a res uh, and I mean this is common sense, you don't want to res people when you've already won the fight. You want to save it and hold it for the next fight where it might actually be really important. Alright, so Mercy notices that some of her teammates are getting picked off now, so she's deciding how do I res as many people as I can. Um, she manages to res two, which is really good. But unfortunately in this case, Reinhardt and Tracer dies just after she reses, so it's going to be very difficult for them to win the fight simply because they're outnumbered. And I don't blame Mercy, I probably would have done the same in this case. Now this is something that I notice people doing wrong all the time, especially at lower ranks, and it's just a general tip. Like, don't go in thinking that you can take on the enemy team when you're outnumbered, especially when your healer's not with you. Like, Mercy's not even with the team here, but they're still going in thinking that they can somehow capture the point. But if your main healer's not with you, how are you supposed to do that? I know I may be nitpicky, but here Mercy notices that Farah is shooting her, so she Guardian Angels to Reinhardt, but unfortunately she shifts a bit too far, so she's out of position again. I know she probably would have died anyway, but trust me, if you can master using your shift to fly just the right distance, it makes a huge difference to your Mercy play, and it allows you to survive so much more. 
Notice how rather than going with the rest of her team, Mercy decides to take a detour because she knows Farah's over there and she probably would have died if she went that way. She does run into Winston here, but she still survives and manages to get a res off, which allows her team to recapture the point with their ultimate. They did end up losing this round on overtime, but there really wasn't anything more that Mercy could have done to help them win that. So even though she lost, her positioning and her decision making was much better that round compared to previously. So I commend her for that. Rather than go through the remaining two rounds, I just want to pinpoint some specific examples of things that Mercy did well and things that she didn't do so well. So here Mercy flies way too far again and rather than staying between her tanks who can protect her she decides to run away and rather than healing Roadhog she damage boosts him which causes him to die and ultimately they all die. I actually want to include this clip here because it's an excellent showcase of how Mercy uses her guardian angel properly. Notice how she like propels herself between targets to keep herself safe and that's ideally what you want to do and what you want to master as Mercy. As this round approaches overtime, Mercy solo res the Rhine, and this is actually the right thing to do since the enemy Mercy is already dead, so the enemy team's not going to come back anytime soon, and by resing the Rhine you can apply even more pressure and make sure that you keep the point. Last but not least, and this isn't really a mistake and I'm not sure if it's intentional or not, but when you're trying to fly to someone, make sure your beam's actually on them, otherwise you'd be flying backwards, which can sometimes throw you off. So yeah, keep that in mind. So I guess that's it for my first VOD review. That was actually harder than I thought it would be because, you know, it's hard to sort of think off the top of your head and try and give critiques at the same time. I hope I wasn't too mean. In summary, I think that the things this player did well was that he had a general good understanding of positioning and game sense, um, apart from a few mistakes here and there. In terms of things to improve from this game, I'd say to work on reflexes when it comes to stopping your shift, um, how far you glide, when to press Q when you're resing, those sort of things. As well as working on when to hide and when to heal, um, because those things can have quite a big impact on the game. But overall I think you did quite a good job, so keep practicing and improving and hopefully you can get the rank you want soon. With all that said, hopefully you guys found this video somewhat useful and not too boring. Um, if you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments below. As always, please like and subscribe because I always appreciate that. And the next time I'm probably going to review a Symmetra VOD and boy oh boy, you guys have some interesting plays so I can't wait to see how that turns out. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.